Are we live? Yeah. Can everybody hear me? I see thumbs is up. I see a lot of pretty pictures, but no live people. You guys, it, it's it. <laughs> Welcome to the Tuesday call. Um, I am, as you know, I am Ron Archer of Archer Travel, and this is the Tuesday Ron Ron call. And uh, so I want to tell you, we've kind of changed the format a bit. Uh, I, I, I got together with the staff and one of the things that we talked about was how we could really provide better information in a more concise manner that was meaningful to uh, everybody in the evolution organization. So welcome. This is the first week kickoff of our new uh, training and information format for weekly videos, trainings, announcements, etc. What we are doing is we are taking either one supplier or one area of the travel business and we are dedicating the week to that supplier or to that uh, segment of the industry. This week it is Carnival Cruises. And so today I'm going to talk about Carnival, uh, and I'm, my my topic today is when are the cruise lines going to open up, and what are what are what is cruising going to look like when it reopens? What can we anticipate going forward? Uh, later on this week, I believe Jose is talking about selling group cruises. Uh, Reggie is going to talk about using cruises for uh, fundraising opportunities for churches, educational groups, uh, youth sports programs, these types of things. Um, Susie's going to talk about, I think Susie has a uh, downtown journey or downtown travel rather is going to be involved. And that was kind of an accident because we'd already had them scheduled. But then as we talked about it in keeping with the theme for the week, what they're talking about now or what they will be talking about is pre and post packages for Carnival Cruises uh, through downtown travel. And then obviously that would work for other suppliers as well. So what we're doing is we're staying central to our themes so that we can be more concise and give you more complete information. Um, next week, I believe the topic of conversation is um, building your business. Uh, it, forgot what we're calling it, increasing your business or enhancing your business and enhancing your income. So how to build your business and how to create more revenue from the business that you already have. So um, I'm kind of excited. I'll, I'll kind of get started. Um, my topic this week is, you know, when are, when are the cruise lines and when is Carnival specifically going to reopen? And once that does reopen, uh, you know, what's cruising going to look like? And I didn't get the information that I expected. It, it came a lot, it, the information I got was a lot different than what I expected. Uh, and um, in, in some cases I find it amusing, in other cases I find it worrisome. Um, so I'm gonna give you a pretty realistic, uh, from my perspective viewpoint and give you some recommendations as to what I would suggest that you do. Um, so, I have my notes. I've, I've, I've got two pages worth of, of notes today. So I'm gonna kind of get to it. And, and then at the end, I'll open it up for questions or, or comments that you may have. Uh, again, these are all being recorded and we're gonna to try to keep to a 30, 35 minute format so that when we put this online, we get a lot more people that will be looking at it. As of right now, Carnival Cruise Lines has paused all cruise departures until June the 1st. The, everything has been basically delayed until the end of May. Um, why? Well, you know, we're seeing a lot of great stuff going on. The, you know, 3 million vaccinations a day, by the way, you know, my, my wife and I, we both got both, you know, vaccinations, but we're in the 65 and older. I've got most of my friends uh, here in Southern California in our age bracket are, are, are vaccinated. I am hearing that uh, vaccines are, are coming down in other areas. 
Um, I have some of my friends in their 50s that are getting vaccinated. Um, and it just depends. I've got, uh, I've got people in different industries that qualify. So, you know, we're starting to see, I think, I think yesterday, I think there was something like 11% of the entire population was, was totally vaccinated. So it is moving forward. Um, the government is, is, is doing a good job in getting vaccines out there, but all the cruise lines are under a, um, a voluntary delay. It's really not voluntary because they wait for this. They call it voluntary, but it's really dictated by the CDC. And of course the CDC is, is going to open up things uh, as it sees a drop in the, in, in the COVID uh, infection rates, uh, as far as that hospitalization rates, these types of things. Um, Canada has closed all ports until February of 2022, 11 more months. They will not be open. Now, what does that mean? What that means is you don't, you cannot leave out of Canada for an Alaska cruise. You cannot leave. Now, does that mean that going out of Seattle and going northbound to Sitka and Anchorage, you won't go into any Canadian ports? I don't know. The problem is that, uh, in fact, I say I don't know, but in reality, I truly doubt it. There would have to be a change in Congress. There is a, there is a federal act that requires foreign flagships not registered in the United States must stop at a foreign port prior to coming back to the United States. So if they leave Seattle and come back to Seattle, they must stop at a foreign port. Little hard to do in Alaska because Canada is your only option. So if they're closed down, you may not see any, uh, you, you, you may not see any Alaska cruises this year unless, uh, unless Congress changes the law. And I always get this confused. It's either the Brown Act or the Jones Act. And I, I can't remember which one. And I'm sure one of you could look that up and, and, uh, and let me know. Let's see here. The new Mardi Gras is, has been delayed now. The new departure for the brand new Carnival Mardi Gras is June the 5th out of Port Canaveral. So um, everything is, is looking for June now. Will that, will that be delayed farther? It's up to the CDC. Uh, personally, I, I, I think it'll probably, I give it a 50-50 chance. To be quite honest with you, I would give it a 50-50 chance. I would not personally sell cruises in June, although I could see they could actually depart. So um, I, would, I would feel most comfortable starting to sell cruises beginning in July, August, September. Now, I think that cruising is going to be radically different uh, in terms of when we go back to cruising, I think it's going to be a totally different experience than what we are normally used to, especially on a Carnival cruise ship. I have uh, 21 different points that um, I came up with that are going to, uh, there's going to have to be changes on board ships. Um, so under the heading of what will cruising look like once we return? Well, number one, first and foremost, they're going to limit capacity. Um, most of the cruise ships that have gone back to market in, in Europe uh, are at 60% or 70% capacity. Uh, they simply can't put as many people on board a cruise ship and, and do the types of activities that they've done. Think about the social distancing uh, that we are requiring here in the United States by having uh, tables eight feet. You know, by the way, Los Angeles County is back in the red. So we have in, in, in room dining now, but tables must be at eight foot capacity. Well, think about a cruise ship. Think about a, a dining room on a cruise ship whereby you know, the tables are not at eight foot intervals and because of the movement of the cruise ship, they're secured to the floor. So this is gonna create some interesting challenges whereby you cannot put full capacity on board a ship. 
Um, number two I have is port restrictions. If you're going into an area, if you're going on a cruise ship and you're going into an area that has different laws and has not uh, the same the same low infection rates as where you're coming from, uh, for example, Miami or Los Angeles or whatever, will the cruise lines restrict what you can do uh, going ashore? Some of the cruise lines are only allowing uh, passengers to go ashore when uh, they're on a shore excursion and they can be controlled. They, they don't want people just running out and going into restaurants and, and getting, uh, you know, getting meals and, you know, having lots of drinks and socializing with people and enjoying the, the local culture and then coming back and, and infecting other people as well. So uh, port restrictions, I believe, are going to be uh, very important. Onboard procedures. Uh, had an interesting experience with this actually. Um, the CDC has protocols in place that uh, for many, many years because of a lot of the infections that, that will break out on cruise ships from time to time. Uh, Legionnaire's disease, some of the SARS. I mean, th there have been, you know, outbreaks, flu outbreaks and, and different outbreaks on board cruise ships. And when they hit a 1% uh, level, let's say if you've got 3,500 people on board and you get 35 people to get sick, they have to notify the CDC. If you get 2% at 70 people, then they have to put into place some protocols. And when it hits 3%, they really have to lock down and do a lot of things. Well, uh, at the time, this was before the pandemic, it was, uh, I believe it was the fall of 2019, we took my mom, who at the time was 90, up to New England, and there was an infectious outbreak on board a Princess cruise ship. Um, it was very interesting, and I think, quite frankly, it'll be the types of things that we'll see uh, when we re return to cruising, it will be kind of the new normal. Uh, number one, when you go to a buffet, you don't serve yourself. You're not, they're not going to allow patrons or guests to put their hands on the food and touch utensils everything will have a server. So you could go to the buffet and all the food will be available in a buffet environment, but it'll be served to you. There will be no salt and pepper shakers on the table. Uh, if they bring you salt and pepper shaker or salt and pepper packets, they may do that, but they don't want anything that's gonna be cross contaminated. So we would go out and, and, um, and at night we'd go to a show and I'd get up and the bottom of my pants would be wet because every time you got up or, or got out of a chair, they'd walk around and they would spray sanitizer on all the furniture. So it was kind of interesting, uh, a little uncomfortable at times, but it was certainly worth the, uh, it was certainly worth the precautions that were taken. I did feel ill one day on that cruise. Unfortunately, um, my mom did not, but I don't know that my, uh, I'm not sure I didn't have the bottle flu as opposed to the regular flu. So uh, don't know exactly the, the origin of that, but I don't suspect it was from on board. Testing. Uh, we believe you'll be tested every time you get on board ship. Number five, masks. Are masks going to be required throughout the cruise ship? Absolutely. And I did read one article. Um, you'll be able to buy masks on board with the Carnival logo on it or the ship's logo on So here again, they'll make it another marketing opportunity, which I thought was amusing. Um, the cruise ships are, are, are afraid when they do travel to Mexico or the Caribbean. Uh, if someone gets sick on board, they will put them off the ship and get them home, obviously. And so they're concerned about because there will be a higher level of uh, what they call repatriation of, of guests, um, the cruise lines may require you take out uh, travel insurance and it will, you know, they will probably push it pretty hard to the point where they might also either require it or put it as a part of the price of the cruise, um, which it won't be commissionable. So it would probably be put under additional port charges and fees. Oh, this one was kind of interesting. Uh, one of the one of the uh, things that they were talking about is porters. When you show up at the cruise ship, 
Um, are you going to check your own bags and carry your own bags on board? Or do they want to put the bags through and have multiple sets of hands? You know, if you think about a bag that you drop off at port, your cab driver or your Uber driver touches it, uh, the porter touches it, and then it's manhandled in the, in, in, in the, uh, in, in the ship. It, it's then the porters, the room porters take it up. And then you then you take it. I mean, there might be eight or 10 different hands that touch bags. And so uh, they may require for initial period that um, you pack lightly and you carry on and off your own bags. Now, when my wife has to, she's actually really good about that. She actually, we went to Europe last, before, just before the pandemic, last February, and she actually packed less than I did, which I was really surprised about. Oh, yeah, here we go. So we were on another cruise ship, and I believe it was Royal Caribbean, where we had the touchless bracelets. So we think the cruise lines are all going to in, embrace the, the new touchless technology. You actually have a, it's a, it's a rubber bracelet that has a magnetized uh, chip in it. So you walk up to your cabin door and you, you, put your, you put your bracelet up against the cabin door and your door unlocks and you go in. Or when you go up to buy a drink at the bar, you don't hand over a card anymore. You use a bracelet and that chip is read by uh, a device at the bar and it automatically charges your account. So uh, touchless technology, I think, is going to come a lot, uh, a, a lot faster uh, and be adopted by multiple cruise lines, including, uh, I think, Carnival. Um, number nine, emergency drills. Think about that. When you get on board a cruise ship and you go have an emergency drill, which is required by the government, guess what? You're standing in line for 30 minutes and you are not socially distant. And you're, you know, you've got your shoulder to shoulder with about, I don't know, 50 people on a lifeboat, 100 people on a lifeboat, or you're inside a bar with uh, totally packed. So I have a feeling, um, it didn't say this specifically, but I think the emergency drills will be required, but will be on television. And what they may do in order to make you watch it is they'll, you know, they'll only put the, the drill on for, you know, 30 minutes at five o'clock. You know, that's the only thing you can watch. Are you going to catch everybody? No, but I think they'll have to do something. Uh, maybe they'll do it on a phone app or on something uh, again. And uh, they'll require you, know, maybe they'll require you to, uh, you know, to watch it and then, uh, and then click on something that you watched it. I, I don't know. Um, okay, we talked about buffet services. That was number 10. Uh, tables limited to six people. Um, again, not only do you have to have social distancing, but a lot of the local governments are requiring tables to be uh, six people or more. Uh, you know, normally you could go eight, 10, 12 people uh, on board a cruise ship and a lot of family reunions are doing this. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, something caught my eye on the chat box. Uh, so again, they'll limit the number of people. And so some, this will affect, you know, some of your larger groups, family reunions, uh, et cetera. Uh, let's see. Oh, unfortunately, the towel animals will have to go. The cruise lines are not going to allow the towel, the monkeys, the, the elephants, uh, all the towel animals at Carnival Leaves, I, they, they are probably going to discontinue that for a while. Also, uh, extra pillows. You, you, typically, you'll have some sort of a couch or something in your stateroom, and there'll be a couple of throw pillows on that. They'll take the throw pillows off because, again, it's not about you, but, you know, from week to week, um, they, you know, if somebody forgets to sanitize a pillow, um, you know that daily sheet of paper that comes under your door with all the daily activities and all the goodies that go, go on that? Gone. Um, obviously, you know, there's multiple touch points on that. So what they'll do is, uh, I, my understanding is they're going to go to an online phone app or some sort of an app uh, so that you can see it on, uh, on your personal device. Um, shore excursions. Shore excursions are typically limited by the number of people allowed in a bus. If a bus carries 35, 
they're not going to allow 35 people initially on that bus. What they'll probably end up doing is maybe half of the people do every other seat or something of that regard. It might be 20 people, 25, 30 people, but they won't, you know, if it's a 50 passenger bus, you might allow 40 or 30. So again, short excursions are going to be limited in size. Uh, here's the bad news. Spas, saunas, massages, uh, barbers, haircuts. Um, these things may be limited for a while. Um, barbershops are open, uh, but I, you know, fingernail, uh, uh, manicures, uh, massages, these things, I don't think they'll go away, but I think they'll be severely limited, you know, because they might have every other, it, it, they might reduce it to 50% of normal so that they have time to clean uh, the workstations properly. Um, I think disco at night is going to be gone. Uh, I don't think you're going to get uh, a jam-packed disco or bar on a cruise ship till three or four in the morning where everybody's getting, um, getting happy and dancing. I, I think that they're going to limit the, the capacity on that. Um, something interesting I have for number 19, group pictures. If you have a group on board of 30 or 40 or 50 people, if, you know, what does the photographer always say? Okay, you guys, crunch together, you know, get together, make it, you know, make sure you can be in the picture. Well, you've got a social distance. Uh, that will be interesting. Um, let's see, onboard shopping sales. You know how they have the sales on board with the t-shirts and the watches and the gold chains and everything else where everybody is just walking around and touching this and touching that and touching everything else? I think things like that are gonna go away. And then finally, um, my number 21, casinos will alter how they, uh, how gaming is done. Um, will they have table games? Are they gonna allow blackjack? Are they gonna allow, uh, uh, you know, uh, roulette where multiple people are touching the dice? Or are they going to have uh, protocols in place where they can clean everything as they go? So again, I mean, these are just, these are 21 things that I came up with and, and uh, in my research of probably two hours worth of looking around the internet and these types of things. So um, cruises are going to be different for a while. When will it return to normal? Cruising will return to normal when society as a whole returns to normal. When you've got in, 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 in-room dining at 75 or 100% capacity, when you get people going to sporting events in stadiums, when you get people walking around, you know, are masks going to be here to stay? I hope not. Um, I'm, I'm not a fan of wearing, I, I wear a mask when I need to. I'm responsible about it, but uh, I, I hate wearing it. Uh, I, I, I just, I don't, I don't care for it. It's, it's foreign even still to this time, it's foreign to me. So um, I think you're going to see uh, my personal guesstimation. And of course, I am neither a medical person or a government person, but I, I would suspect if what I'm reading is correct, uh, we're going to see some semblance of normalcy. Uh, you know, uh, President Biden is talking about July 4th being a place when families can gather again. I think that that's I, I think that's great, but I don't think you're going to be at 100% uh, green on that. I would say if you're looking for people to have a full-on experience, it's going to be late this year or early into next year. Now, does that mean I wouldn't go on a cruise ship? Absolutely not. I go on cruises. I love I love the food. I, I love the entertainment. I love uh, you know I, I I love the slot machines. You know, I, I, I take a nap every day. I read books. I, I lay out in the sun for a couple of minutes. You know, I go on shore excursions or play golf at a foreign port. I mean, those activities are still going to be available. Are we still going to have a good time on cruise ships? Absolutely, because it's also who you're with uh, as well as the experience. So I, I see cruising being somewhat muted because of these types of activities. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that you go out and build a ton of groups for, you know, July, August. But I think if October, which is, by the way, a wonderful time to cruise, 
October, November, December, January, February, I think you're going to see things wide open. On the other hand, I think up until that time, uh, July, August, September, I think you're going to see enhancements in terms of um, Carnival did announce a $100 onboard ship credit. So they're going to be putting uh, things in, in, in place to motivate people to go on cruise ships. And pent up demand is huge. So when the cruise lines open, I have every anticipation that people are going to fill up whatever capacity that there is. But the experience is going to be different. So I think it's, it's, it's not a simple you know, crystal ball, let me tell you exactly what I think is going to happen. There's so many variations. There's so many things going on. You've got governmental agencies involved. You've got medical agencies involved. You've got the cruise. The cruise lines don't want to get sued. They don't want to put people on a ship and get them sick. You know, so they're going to be extremely careful. This is one area of the industry which is going to be very cautious about what they do and how they do it. Is that going to affect the experience? Yes. Are we going to have to be patient and understanding? Absolutely. However, I think it's still going to be very exciting, uh, a lot of fun. And I have told uh, the top brass at Carnival that I want to be on one of the first ships that leaves port. I want to show people that, hey, this is what's going on. And my plan is to do social media and say, Here's what it is. Here's the experience. Here's what's happening. Here I am sitting in a slot machine having a cocktail. This is great. Here I am sitting on deck. Here I am in the restaurant. I, I, I anticipate a lot of these things are going to be uh, pretty cool. Um, now, I'm pretty much done. We don't have a whole lot of time, but if you've got any questions, you can either unmute yourself or put them in the chat box. I see that... Uh, Send to everyone. The CEO of Virgin was on GM, uh, Good Morning America this morning. He said all crew, staff, and guests will be required to have a vaccine on board, uh, a vaccine in order to board the ship. Um, that's interesting. I, I am surprised that they are going to require the vaccine. Um, I'm only surprised because there's been such talk back and forth about personal rights and people's desire to vaccine or not vaccine or people's concerns about vaccines. Can you mandate it? Can you require it? Can you legally require it? Um, so um, I'm sure that Virgin has uh, checked that out with the government. So I would assume that they can, if they've said it, they've probably research to whether they can require it or not. So yeah, you may see uh, a vaccine uh, required before you get on board, but hey, that's a great thing. Um, let's see, sanitizing stations have been on board ships for a long time. I'm sure that you're gonna, I, I'm sure they're gonna be every, they're gonna be like Starbucks, they're everywhere. Uh, let's see, yep. We are, yes, Donna Fontaine, we are in a new normal. Um, so it is, uh, it is something that uh, will be interesting as it evolves over the next couple of years, you know, with the variants and the strains. I mean, we're still in a bit where we, we don't know what we don't know, and we don't know what the, what the herd immunity will look like. But with, you know, I encourage you, uh, for the sake of your business and your loved ones. And I encourage, I encourage you to encourage other people to get the vaccine. Um, I had the Pfizer vaccine. So I had, uh, I had absolutely, I had no pain in my arm. I had no fever. I had no reaction whatsoever to the Pfizer vaccine. Uh, my wife had the Moderna vaccine um, and she had a little tenderness in her arm the first shot. Uh, and then the second shot, she did get chills and fever. Uh, she said for about six to seven hours, and then she felt perfectly fine. Um, I did hear, well, I won't go into that because that's all rumor. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, Virgin Voice moving to wristbands, yeah. Um, can you imagine? <laughs> can, can you imagine what it's going to take to retrofit all these big... Oh, here's another thing I, that I, I didn't put down, I thought about. So uh, what is it? Uh, the, the largest ship out there is like, what, 
5,000 passengers. Uh, is it, Ron, is it the Allure? What, what's the biggest one? The 5,500, is that the Allure? Royal Caribbean? Somebody help me out here. What, what, what's the biggest crew? There's two of them. What are the biggest ships? Ah, come on. Anyway, can you imagine putting 6,000 people on board a cruise ship in, in, in a matter of like four or five hours? You know, getting them checked in and, and getting their credit cards. What is that going to look like? I mean, can you imagine these massive ships where they're going to be putting, you know, you, you got to go through the lines and, and, and of course, you know, every time you get on board a cruise ship, somebody wants to take your picture. So that backs things up. Um, Harmony of the Seas. Okay, that's one. That wasn't the one I was thinking about. Symphony, yeah, that's close. I mean, yeah, the Allure. Uh, Symphony and Harmony. Okay, I'm going to have to go back. I, I'm out of practice. I haven't been working with Cruise as much this year. Um, anyway, uh, anybody got any questions or any comments? Because I think that, uh, you know, I think that uh, whereas whereas, you know, we're in a, a kind of an area that, that's a bit of an unknown, you know, having this kind of information and people, people say, well, what's it going to look like? What, what, what's cruising going to look like? Well, it's going to be a bit different, but it's going to be no less fun. I mean, is the cruising just about being, at the, being on sea? No, it's about who you're traveling with and what you're doing and the places that you see and the interest that's out there. So, um, Okay, so the three biggest cruise ships are the Symphony with Royal Caribbean, the Harmony, and the Allure. Yeah, so the Allure was the one I was thinking about. Um, uh, Liz College, yeah, in the, uh, Carnival is, is has, uh, I, I'm just going to recap. Carnival is uh, has paused all cruises through May. Oasis is the uh, sister ship of the, uh, I think, is the sister ship? The Oasis and the Allure. Anyway, um, everything is paused in the United States uh, by the CDC under a voluntary pause dictated by the CDC uh, until uh, June the 1st. And as I was saying earlier, I would really probably look to start selling cruises at, at, at late, later in July or August. I think that there's going to be quite a bit of restrictions and I think it's, I think even though there's a lot of restrictions and they may be at like 50% capacity, uh, a lot of people have, um, you know, are they going to give the people that are, that are moving their cruise credits forward first come first serve basis? There's a lot of things that we, we really don't know. So um, I would look on Carnival's uh, uh, cruise lines website right now and look for uh, what ships they're selling, what ships are open, what's going on. But personally, my recommendation is, I wait. I would wait uh, 45 to 60 days after they open, before uh, uh, 45 to 60 days after the cruise lines start operating, before I would start selling them. Uh, just because I think there's going to be uh, some unknowns that are going to impact uh, the cruise, and and it's like opening up a new hotel. You never really want to go in the first couple of months because everybody's trying to figure out what what's going on. Uh, you know, you book it you know six months down, then the experience is a lot better. So. Um, that's what I got. Um, Christian Gelster, uh, I've heard people are going to get COVID testing four times. Yeah, it depends on the, law, the amount of the cruise. Um, my brother just got back from Africa and he went to, uh, he went on a safari and he said that in 10 days, they probably got tested 10, 10 times. You know, they got tested every time they went into a new uh, a new game preserve. They got tested when they crossed the borders. They got tested at the airport, and he said it was it was relatively easy, and they had a they had a wonderful time. And he said they saw every one of the big big game except uh, an adult cheetah. Um, and he said it was uh, he went through M Mercado, and it was an absolutely wonderful experience with uh, my brother and my sister in law. So um, all is good. Things are opening up. Uh, we're still we're selling a lot of land. Uh, you guys are still selling a lot of um, uh, uh, Expedia, uh, Expedia Tap. Again, guys, I recommend you look at other 
suppliers. If you're if you're looking for hotels, specifically Room Res, Archer Go, um, Pleasant, Apple. If you're booking hotels, you're getting three to five percent, and then we're only paying fifty percent on Expedia Tap. If you're booking on other suppliers, you're booking at ten to to fifteen, sixteen percent, and you're getting eighty percent. So. It's not as convenient, but I, again, I want to continue to urge you to look for other suppliers because you're going to make more money, okay? So uh, I'm not seeing any new, I'm not seeing any new questions, but um, I appreciate everything you guys are doing. Um, I, I, I see great things happening. I think, I think these are necessary steps that we move through to get back to normal, whatever that new normal may or may not be in the industry. And I think, by the way, I will, I will leave it on this point. I believe that all of the things that are happening within the cruise industry and within the travel industry to mitigate the COVID situation is going to absolutely propel the travel industry technology forward decades ahead of where it would have normally uh, been propelled to do. I think you're going to see a lot of things uh, going on that are a byproduct of dealing with the, the COVID. And I think ultimately travel is going to be safer. It's going to be easier. It's going to be streamlined. And I think it's going to be a better customer experience and hopefully at a lower cost structure. So ultimately the pain that we're going through now Five years from now, 10 years from now, uh, I think we'll look back and go, wow, that really made things change and actually made them change for the better. So uh, as difficult as this is, I keep a positive attitude and uh, move forward uh, with groups. And by the way, um, I've got a lot of groups that have come to me. We're starting up our, our sports travel program again. Um, I've got a, a, a group that is, uh, is doing a two-day glamping experience. So we're starting to see a lot more movement. We've got kids that we're going to start planning uh, youth soccer uh, tournaments in Europe for 2022 uh, because we have to plan those a year in advance. So we're really excited. Things are coming back. Uh, they're coming back strong. And the next step, I believe, is the cruises that will come back. So listen throughout the week. Um, we're going to have a lot more topics that are dedicated towards the Carnival product and the Carnival product line and how you can maximize your income and increase your customer base. So thank you all for everything you guys are doing. Stay well, uh, get out there, sell some travel, make some money and have some fun. So I wish you goodbye for now.